All right, welcome back to another episode of Stitch Method. I'm very excited to uh, do this one. This is an In the Mind of the Allman Brothers Guitar Mini, or Guitar Harmony. Uh, I'm going to try to make this as quick and as simple as possible. It is not an easy thing to do, but um, a YouTube subscriber asked me to talk about Harmony, and there was no better band at Harmony, in my opinion, uh, than the Allman Brothers. And let's just talk about why. Um, I've done a video or two uh, about harmony on my friend Sean Daniels channel and when it comes to that type of harmony we're talking about when there's one chord being played or like a five chord usually like in heavy metal or kind of like rock and you know one note is being played and then the other guitar player is going to play like a perfect fourth interval on top of it the entire time like you know and they create these harmonies where one note is here and then they're going to pick an interval and they're going to move in fourths and fifths and they're kind of kind of stay perfectly parallel next to each other. Uh, that's not what the Allman Brothers do. If you like the Allman Brothers or listen to them, they have two distinct guitar parts that are playing in harmony uh, and both of them stand on their own. If you've ever seen uh, them live or heard a live like recording, you can hear when both guitars are turned up that it's two like totally different guitar parts and they're playing, uh, but when they put on the album, one is usually a little bit lower in the mix where one takes the melody and the other one becomes the harmony. And so I want to discuss how the Allman Brothers did it. And um, I studied three songs, um, Ramblin' Man, Blue Sky, and Jessica, because to me, like, those are some of the best, like, creative, like, happy melodies, and I'm, I'm a happy dude. So um, I studied them, and I found some cool things. So before before even, you know, get into it, let me play it for you. Let me play this... Um, an example of something. When I figure something out, and you should do this too, when you figure something out, you should try recreating it on your own. And so when I figure this out, I'm going to, uh, I, I said I'm, I need to create an Allman Brothers jam, an, Al an Allman Brothers like guitar harmony. And so I'm going to record it. You can probably see my hands and figure out the chords. I'll discuss everything in uh, great detail, but I'm going to layer each guitar part and let's see if I can get that harmony going. Sorry, didn't have my compressor turned on and something was wrong with the sound, so I figured it out. Here we go. So I'm, what I'm going to do is really quickly create what I created and break it down for you in the video. So the first thing I'm going to do is record the chord progression. Here we go. So there's that first chord progression loop. And now I'm going to overlay the melody part, like guitar number one, and then I'll do guitar number two. So here we go. Here's guitar number one. Recreating the Allman Brothers. Let's see. Okay, so that would be guitar number one, right? And so now I'm going to turn on a secondary distortion so you can hear it. And now I'm going to put the harmony down. Listen to these two parts. sense of timing was better today. I would have cut that. Anyway, all right, so uh, you can hear that this to me, you know, when I created this in search of can I recreate an Allman Brothers um, harmony, to me I was like, yes, this is exactly how they do it. So let's talk about how they do it, how you can do it, whatever key you want, and let's take it from the very beginning. Here we go. Okay, so of the three uh, songs that I recorded or uh, listened to, I noticed one pattern very quickly, which is uh, they're all mixolydian-based chord progressions. Now, mixolydian chord progression means that we have a key, and we start on the five chord. And you can watch my Truly Understanding Modes video if you haven't seen that. And so, my hands landed on the G to start this G chord, you probably saw uh, this song, and you probably saw that. And so, this means that this guy has to be the five, right? So, uh, C, F, G, key of C. So, C is one, F is four, and G is five. So. Um, I pretty much stuck with the ones, fours, and fives, and I created this progression starting on the five. Five, four, one, five, four, one, five, and uh, pretty, pretty simple chord progression. And I thought that would do a good job of laying down a template uh, of what I needed to do. Now, so that's part one. There's about four parts to doing this. Part two is you got to come up with um, a melody. Um, that is like 95, 96% chord arpeggios. 
of the chords that are happening at the time of the chord progression. So what the heck do I mean by that? Well, the first chord is a G. And so when I was playing this slowly, and I wrote this slowly, I just kind of went and I just held a G chord down. You can see I plucked the D string, G string, and B string. And those notes are G, G, B, D, an intervallic value, one, one, three, five. And I was like, that was, that was a starting point. Right there, I had the drum for it, you know, boom, ba, ba, ba. And then my ears, this is that, that like, one thing you want, to, you want to realize is that the mathematics behind everything, the theory behind everything can help you construct, but you do want to trust your ears and your heart when you hear something. So I heard this, one, one, three, five. And then I just hummed, ba, ba, ba. I, I've chased it down, ba, 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 ba. okay, so my starting point was, ba, 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 ba. then the F chord came, and I said, okay, well, F chord, ba, 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 ba. and I stayed in my place, and I played an F chord, now, just in case, you know, you haven't seen it, you can look at my cage chord videos they have, um, and this is a D-shaped F chord, and I kind of just, like, slapped this down, I said, oh, okay, yeah, F, that sounds good. Then here's a C chord here. And I kind of, oh, and this note sounded great. And that's an E. And I need to bring it home here because this is in my G chord. And it just felt right. Pick up your guitars and play this along with me so you can see it. All these notes of, of, of this um, moment are in the G. Except for this. But I liked it. And then I went to the F chord. F, F, went to a C chord. To a G chord. All those are in the, in the chords. And you can hear it if I play this. Like It's on the loop, right? And I loved it. And then I wanted to create, uh, the loop happens again, the C chord hangs on for a little bit different time, so I kind of matched it. The second time around, I did the same G arpeggio. Then the F came, and I wanted to change it up, and if I play that D-shaped F chord again, look at that ring finger. Great, that sounds so good. And then it goes to a C chord. Again, this note's in the C chord. I heard this guy. Back to the C chord note, and it ends on this guy which is the major third of the G. And so if you're a little confused here, you want to know your cage chords and go watch my cage chord system, but you want to see that this is the G chord, this is the F chord, and this is the C chord. And the melody notes that I wrote Six percent chord arpeggios. Now there is some heart, a lot of heart that goes into this. Not saying that I have a lot of heart, but in the Allman Brothers, you know, they didn't settle for anything they didn't like, and so they kind of like use the arpeggios as like a um, like a germ, uh, as like seedling to help create. Um, the, the melodies, and they could have heard it better in their heads, but the idea is is that level two, on top of a mixolydian chord progression, is a heavy chord arpeggio type melody. And you can see it work for all the songs I mentioned, and plus some. And so now, the harmony. This is the hardest thing to talk about. And if you want to hear a great example of this, the, the band Ween has a song, I believe, called Dickie Betts. And it's like, it, it, it's like the, the best like culmination of like, <laughs> A tribute to Dicky Betts and uh, his harmonies uh, with uh, with um, uh, Dwayne Allman, and uh, it's really cool to listen to because he nails it, or they nail it. So, how do you do this? How do you get your your own brother um, harmony? Well, this is very apparent when I was studying this. I wrote down all the notes and the harmonies, and I kind of like started playing. And I went, "Oh my God, this is so." It is so about the guitar, this harmony. It's not about like music theory or piano or anything. It's about the guitar. And I want to show you what I mean. Here's a G chord. Now, if I hold this G chord down, you can see my first finger. Pluck that harmony, right? Pluck the melody, excuse me. Boom, 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 boom. Now, all I'm going to do is now put my thumb on the thickest, the thicker string next to where my melody note is. So here I am on the D string, and my thumb's going to go on the A string. And now I'm going to pluck two notes at a time where my first finger is on the melody note but my thumb is just chasing behind it on the thicker string next to it. All right, again. And then it struck me. The way the Allman Brothers got their melodies and their, and their guitar lines and their harmonies was by one person playing the, uh, an arpeggio piece and the other one playing the thicker note next to it of the chord. 
and it becomes a chord based harmony which is absolutely amazing and so what I mean by this is listen to this listen to the melody listen to when I pluck two strings at a time where the melody note is on my first finger and then I have this harmony note where my thumb uh, is on, on whatever string it's on now if I just play my thumb part not that impressive but what they do is they take that thicker harmony, the, the one below it, the lower one, and they move it up an octave higher. I said, and I said, okay, well, it's a D, D, G, B. And so I went up here and I said, there's no way it could be like this, like D, D, G, B. And I went, yeah, that's exactly it. So I'm going to turn my distortion. And I'm just going to play the first three parts of that melody, uh, harmony, but you can hear that it sounds Almond Brothers-esque. Okay, now. Once you get into the habit of using a chord-based harmony, uh, it starts to crumble into your fingers how the line should go, but I'll show you uh, how it came about. One thing I want to uh, reiterate is that we're in the key of C, okay? It's G, F, and C, which is in the key of C, so the C major scale is going to produce a lot of these, these melodies and harmonies, even though we're playing the chord arpeggios, those chord arpeggios are in the key of C. So when you're coming up with melody lines, you want to make sure, you want to be like, okay, am, am I still in the C major scale when I'm playing? And you will be. If you're in the key of A, you want to be in the A major scale. But all those chord tones are in there. So I had this. Now, I heard, again, and the thing is, this guy's not in the chord. And so I, I kind of played around. And it went with... That's an A, B, A, and that's the one harmony that wasn't in a chord tone sequence. It was just a fifth below it. This is a one, this is a five. And so, sorry. And I kind of heard that, hunted that down, but after that moment, we're back to chord tones, okay? We go to an F, and check this out. Here's my melody. Here's my thicker note, a D-shaped chord. C chord. G chord you hear the, the melody note and the harmony note and so I figured that out uh, I'm sorry an octave higher and the reason I bent it is I ended up I ended up in, in the melody sorry kind of bending those notes so I match the bend. So now let's listen to when I took just the thicker notes of the chords being played, the thicker notes of the melody, you know. Played two notes at a time, took that lower set of notes and moved it up an octave higher, and we get this. the first part it works out great all I'm doing is playing the chord tones of the thicker portion up higher now the second time around the melody changes a little bit yeah the so that stays the same so this part stays the same for me but then I went to this note now this note is in the F chord it's F here's an F and this note is in the F and the C that note right there, that note is a C, okay? And so all I did is, uh, okay, and, and I found this note here that sounded good. I know it's like, what the hell are you talking about, Ian? But this note here, I'll play it for you, you can hear it. note is a C, it's in an F chord, it's in, the, it's in the F chord, it's in the C chord, and my ears heard it. And because you start this path of this like chord-based harmony, your ears start to hear your next move, and you gotta hunt it down in the C major scale, it'll be there. And then I ended on this note here, which is the major third of the chord, and the, the melody ends, and I just played the thicker note underneath it. Again, same thing. So now I took those notes, and I figured out where they are here, and you get... Okay. 
And to me, that's an Allman Brothers harmony. And I hope this is making sense. So let's just, before you're like, what, what happened? Let's just talk about, there's one fourth level that we're going to talk about. Let's talk about the, the three levels that I just mentioned. Number one, mixolydian chord progression is important. Number two, an arpeggio-based melody. Very, very thick on the arpeggios. One that, that you approve of, one that you like, one that takes some time to shape. Just don't play random arpeggios. You know, really enjoy that moment of creating that melody. Number two, you play the chords, like the physical chunk of a chord, but you pluck two notes at a time. One where the melody note is on the thinner string, and then you pluck with your thumb the note that's on the thicker string. Okay, very, very simple. Boom, boom, boom. And you, and you start getting these other notes and you take those notes and you move them an octave higher and you'll start to get the, the shaping of your harmony. Now, this is the fourth part I want to mention is once you get to designing the harmony with kind of playing those thicker notes, your ears and your mind start to feel where, like, where you kind of want to go. And so you don't have to be strict anymore in terms of like, am I playing the exact thing correctly in terms of this mathematical equation? No. Let your ears also shape your harmony. They will do a fine job. If your ears approve, it is music. And so that's what happened that moment for me that... second time around like I really like that and I said you know what I don't want to even know the theory behind it even though it works out theory wise I just said I trust it it sounds good and so the Allman Brothers harmony is about mixolydian chord progressions and two notes at a time of a chord being plucked one of them is the melody and one of them becomes the harmony and then the one that's not the melody gets moved an octave higher and the volumes just dropped a little bit so I hope this all made sense in the mind of the Allman Brothers. Go write your own stuff. Do it in the key of A. If it was in the key of A, you would start on an E chord. If you do it in the key of D, start it on an A chord. Write your chord progressions. Arpeggio um, guitar lines. And then chord chunks that are no longer played down with the chord but moved up higher for the melody. And you get these great uh, Allman Brother type harmonies. And it's really fun to do. I'm going to play myself out with this harmony. But I hope this all made sense. So go do it. Have fun. Um, if you have a second guitar player in your band, show them this video and you guys work together and you guys can really play some really sick stuff. I uh, hope you had a great 2018. Uh, Happy New Year to everyone. And I'll see you in a couple days in the new year. All right, rock and roll. Bye-bye. <laughs>